Hi guys, it's me. I uh, thought I'd do an update. Not really feeling really good and really honestly didn't want to make a, a video, but it's a good time to make a video, so I'm going to do it. Um, uh, this coming up Wednesday is going to be my final chemotherapy session, I hope, forever. Um, I'm not going to be uh, unrealistic and um, pretend like this may never happen again because then I would be unprepared as I was the first time. But uh, I just feel differently about it this time, you know. Last time I was really ready for the fight and I knew I was going to win and um, I was ready to kick cancer's ass and I did and never expected it to come back five years later as a lot of you guys know. Um, so this time I really felt like, you know, there was something wrong with me. I was really angry and uh, that was the primary emotion that I was having. And I discovered that I'm not alone. The, the people that I've talked to who have had recurrences all felt very, very similar. So it made me feel better. Um, I have to say that um, being somebody who is identified as trans and having ovarian cancer of all things, <laughs> I don't know if it could be more difficult. Um, just, it's just all the all the comments, go girl, you know, and we women have to stick together and all that. And people don't mean anything by it. A lot of this communication is via the web, so they don't know me, they don't they don't uh, see me, and they certainly do not see Brad in me, which, by the way, is where my name came from. Um, I am still going by my birth name, although I much prefer my nicknames or my last name. Um, where that name came from is the fact that I love the name Brad and Braden, and I realized, well, my first <clears throat> my first name starts with a C, and I realized what I really wanted is for people to see Brad in me. And um, anyway, um, so this is my shittiest weekend. I'm starting to feel better. Uh, Saturday and Sunday were horrible. Uh, in terms of just feeling really shitty, but I took a lot of anti-nausea medicine and uh, that helped out a little bit. So I'm starting to come out of it. Um, I do want to spend just a little bit of time on something that is really, really uncomfortable that I might have talked about in the past, but um, uh, it's something that as uh, the trans community, trans men really uh, need to know about because uh, I am not the first person that uh, has been uh, hit with a cancer related to uh, female body parts. And ovarian cancer is so difficult to diagnose, and I'm sure that most trans men are not going uh, not going to go ahead and even look that stuff up, but are going to deny any symptoms that they may be feeling in that area. Because um, I know uh, I did a very, very good job of separating myself from my female organs. So, I don't know, maybe maybe this is why I got it, so I can tell you guys. So, I'm actually just going to read a couple of the, the main symptoms that I also experienced. And uh, you guys should just be aware of in case you, you notice these things especially all together. This is probably one of the diseases that is most often um, missed or uh, misdiagnosed as something else. Um, but I can tell you that uh, looking back, I saw, I saw the symptoms. Even though I said I didn't have any, I really just wasn't aware. So um, the symptoms are Let's see, one of the ones that I noticed the most was sort of an increased uh, abdominal girth. Now, a lot of you guys that are on T are going to notice that your bodies are starting to change, and you may or may not be aware if that's the T. Most likely it's not. 
Okay, most likely you do not have this, but I just want trans guys to be aware that these are some of the more prevalent symptoms. An increase in abdominal girth or your clothes starting to fit tighter around your waist. Um, I also had um, a feeling of fullness very quickly when I ate, which I was a really, I still am, a very good eater. And um, I remember I definitely knew something was wrong when I couldn't eat dessert at my one of my best friend's house. Um, they're both chefs, and I wouldn't miss a meal over there, and I just could not. Uh, finally, when I when I finally got diagnosed, that's I just could not eat any more. But I noticed looking back that I was getting sort of having some pressure in my abdomen and a feeling of fullness, swelling, or bloating. Here are some of the other symptoms: uh, urinary urgency, uh, feeling like you have to go and you got to go right now, or maybe having to go more frequently. Um, so a change in bladder habits, um, unexplained changes in bowel habits. Uh, I didn't have that very much, but gas, flatulence, persistent indigestion, gas or nausea. I had it very, very mildly, but I did have these symptoms. Um, pelvic discomfort, pain during intercourse, if you're into that. A persistent lack of energy, low back pain, and possibly changes in your menstruation. Um, which, if you're on T, just omit that one. Um, and I said the feeling of uh, loss of appetite or feeling full quickly. All right, so those are just some of them. Um, and you can see these, are, these symptoms are just so uh, general that it's easily missed. And I just, I don't know, I felt really strongly today when I decided to make a video that I need to get that out because of the fact that we are so, most of us are just so separated from our female organs, we, we, um, we would do a really good job of putting these symptoms aside. Um, hopefully this is the end of the road for me in cancer. Uh, my doctor told me, you know, I have, it's a 50-50 shot, but the chances of having a recurrence, everyone feels is much more reduced if I go on this clinical, clinical trial, this, this um, new medication. That is not FDA approved, of course, but um, so I'm more than likely going to do that. My uncle is one of my favorite people in the world, has flown in um, for a vacation, but also to come to this part of the state to go with me to meet with the team um, who are uh, trying to sign me up for this clinical trial so that um, he's a doctor and he does a lot of research. So. Uh, he can ask some questions that maybe I wouldn't think about. So, anyway, that's enough of that. I want to wish Troy 23Y. Um, I don't know if he'll see my video, but um, I want to wish him a very safe trip to Serbia for his lower surgery. I think that's incredibly courageous and awesome. I know it's something that um, had I had a chance to um, fully transition, that's something that I definitely um, would have been looking into. Um, so I just think it's really brave and awesome. So uh, those of you who know him or don't know him, give him a shout out and you know, send him some messages and say good luck. Um, happy holidays to everybody, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to have a party after Wednesday, give myself a few days to start feeling better, and celebrate the end of uh, my chemotherapy. And uh, I wish you guys. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just saying happy holidays in case I don't talk to anybody. Um, going to try to get back to work in January. Obviously not on my fire engine, but in a light duty capacity. But at least I'll be getting back in uniform and hopefully fitting into my damn uniform. I am so overweight, but I'm just trying to just let it be and uh, just focus on feeling better. Okay? Um, Hello to everybody. I can't name everybody, but um, you know who you are. Um, and uh, happy holidays, guys. Bye-bye.